Hello YouTube, this is Magnolia Mo and you are watching my channel. Today, we are going to go over some tips to get the most out of your Odyssey Multi EQ XT that's built into your processor uh, your, uh, or your receiver. Um, and and uh, just to start off with, I do want to acknowledge, uh, you know, a mistake that I've, I've made in the past uh, and in one of my videos, I had mistakenly said something that that uh, was not accurate, right? So I'm gonna cover that as well. But what I wanna do right now, uh, as of this moment, is to go over the things that, that we can do, the, the, the steps that we can take before we run the Odyssey Multi EQ XT and after we run the Odyssey Multi EQ XT 32 that's built into your processor. All right, so here's a quick re refresher on the Odyssey Multi EQ Editor app. Uh, here's the screen where where you see your speaker detection results. Uh, you can go into individually, you know, each speaker and update the configuration, small, large. Uh, you can go over to the crossovers and adjust the crossovers uh, that you want if Odyssey doesn't set them correctly. Um, if, and then this is where you can go in and update the levels uh, once you've validated with your SPL meter meter if the levels are not accurate. Uh, and then on the next screen, you get your room correction results. Pre and post Odyssey. Next is the, the target sound options, high frequency roll off, go with option one, two, doesn't matter, up to you. The mid-range compensation, I have it all off, off of my speakers, I'll talk about that. The curve editor, this is where you can boost or um, you can cut certain uh, certain frequencies. This is useful in my opinion for uh, specifically for subwoofers if you want to boost um, certain frequencies. But you can select each speaker and then go into um, that speaker and edit the, the curve. And remember you have to resend all of this data back to the receiver or your processor. Then you have your multi EQ filter frequency range. I'm going to talk about this. You can adjust um, if you want to do a full band um, calibration using Odyssey, or do you want to limit the frequencies where Odyssey is being applied? And then finally, you have your Odyssey set settings for dynamic EQ and all those are all pref preferential. All right, the first one is positioning the mic microphone, right? Number one uh, is you can, uh, if you're going to take your eight measurements at eight, eight positions, it's eight different positions. It's not at the same primary listening position, right? And then position two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cannot be more than 20 inches from the primary listening position. Uh, in my last video, I had said 24 inches. That's what the, when you're running the software, that's the direction uh, that you get. But, uh, you know, I've done some research and you're probably already aware that 20 inches is more, uh, you know, more, uh, more of the practice and, and, and that's where you're going to get the best results, right? So it's tw no more than 20 inches from the primary listening position. Number two, when you're done taking the measurements, don't just trust what you get from Odyssey. Uh, you have to, to 
play the room, right? You have to play your speakers, essentially. You have to go with what your speakers are. If Odyssey will incorrectly set up uh, certain speakers to large or set the crossovers um, low, like my, for, for example, my BMW uh, 702 S2s, um, it, it sets them at large. Um, I actually have to manually go in there, set them to small, and then I set the crossover to 40. Um, similarly, uh, my Atmos in-ceiling speakers, um, you know, it, it will set the crossover uh, to 40 hertz. Um, and, and I have to go in manually and adjust it. So, so you have to take that, that additional step uh, and, and go through and validate what the, the speaker size is that Odyssey is checking. Number three is before you run uh, Odyssey, you have to uh, align the phase between your sub subs and your your speakers, your main speakers, right? If you are, if you're gonna, if you have large speakers, or if you have full range speakers, uh, or if you think you have full range speakers, um, what you should do is use um, room, you know, uh, REW, or uh, I have the OmniMic system. To actually phase align your your the subs along with your your front uh, left and right speakers, and that goes a long way. All right, because and I and I've gone over this before, uh, where Odyssey does a great job, right, uh, when it comes to subwoofer calibration in the low frequencies, um, but then you know when where where your room may not be behaving well, or if you have two subwoofers uh, and they're not uh, phase aligned correctly. Then, then you end up with nulls, and and you have to actually address that uh, ahead of time, um, and and make sure that the phase is correct, um, and and once you you've done that, then you can run Odyssey, and then you'll see a much flatter uh, Odyssey curve without the the dips. Uh, and I'm gonna leave a link uh, to that video in the description below as well. Here's the before and after. Um, of once I actually did the phase alignment between uh, my front and, and rear subs, the 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 before is where you have the the peaks and the nulls, and then the after is after the phase alignment, and um, that was a pretty flat response using the the SVS parametric EQ app. And number four, mid range compen uh, compensation. Uh, so this is where Odyssey attempts to address the issues between, uh, you know, in, in that crossover range from your tweeter over to your mid-range. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have high-performing uh, speakers, if you have uh, high, you know, speakers that, that, that are considered high-quality, uh, high-performance speakers uh, where you've paid quite a bit of money, I, I would turn that setting off. Um, I remember back in the day when I used to have uh, JBL Northridge um, uh, towers, uh, and uh, I think it was the E80, actually no, e, E100, so the 10-inch woofers, and I mean, those are good speakers, but, but you know, I attempted, like, I, I left the, because I didn't have the, the, you know, they didn't have the app at that time, I didn't want to pay for the, the pro kit for, from Odyssey, um, and and I believe this is my theory that that mid-range compensation actually uh, you know messed up the the tweeters on on one of the the actually on both of the 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 speakers um, and, and they started to distort uh, and and that's just that's just me but but um, I think if you have if you have uh, high quality speakers uh, that is a setting that you can. Uh, turn off. I always turned it off with my Martin Logans, um, the Theos, and the Vantages, Martin Logan Vantage that I had, um, because there is no tweeter. You know, it's just one panel. Um, and and then even when I had the the, the center, uh, which uh, was the Stage X, and then the Motif X that uses the the um, uh, the ribbon tweeter, right? Um, even in that case. Uh, I would uh, turn the mid-range compensation uh, off, um, and uh, and and you know, to me, it's it's a good idea because it's it's two kilohertz. I believe it's two kilohertz, uh, and 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 above where where this Odyssey is attempting attempting to make the correction. So, so number four, number four, um, you can turn off the mid-range compensation if you have high 
performing speakers. You don't have to keep that on and you'll get a much smoother sound in, in, in the process. The number five is the shorter frequency, limiting uh, Odyssey frequency range, right? This is different from the mid-range compensation. So every room, you know, has a level of resonance and a level of reflect reflection. There is a certain point where uh, the room stops resonating and then it's, it's your high frequencies kind of take over, right? In your overall frequency spectrum. So uh, and that's where the sh Schroeder frequency comes into effect, right? And that's where you need to figure out where, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a full bandwidth uh, correction using Odyssey or do you want to limit it, right? Um, and if you have good amounts of um, room acoustics uh, and, and they're well placed and, and you are limiting your, uh, your, your, your reflections in the room, uh, then, then you don't need to EQ in, in the high frequencies, right? Uh, so essentially, uh, Odyssey, it, it gets difficult for Odyssey to tell, uh, you know, or, or in my opinion, you know, it's doing too much, right? Where it's also, so uh, it's EQing your, 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 your low frequencies, your high frequencies. And, and, and this is why we see, uh, you know, the, the sound actually gets, get, it gets a little, um, you know, versions, you know, when, when you go into the high frequencies, when, when you're listening to, to Odyssey versus in pure direct mode for, for music uh, per se, right? So if you have, so, so the shorter frequency for most rooms uh, is going to be between 200 to 300 hertz. Um, to be on the safe side, you know, I, when I'm um, running, you know, after I run Odyssey, I actually limit the frequency uh, uh, range to 500 hertz. Uh, and, and I'm only EQing, you know, up to 500 hertz, nothing over that. That will actually, you know, and, and I've heard it, you, you have to let your ears decide, right, um, whether it made a difference and is it better uh, or not. And I will tell you, you will find it better, uh, you know, the, the, by limiting the frequency uh, range that Odyssey is, is being applied to, right? So 500 hertz, you can go a step further, which is completely optional. If you have REW or if you have the OmniMic system like I, I do, you can measure the RT60 decay in your, in your room and then limit your, uh, limit Odyssey to that um, number, right? And, and to that figure, right? In my room, it's, it's around like if I, if I do, uh, if I look at uh, 750 milliseconds uh, you know it's around it's between 450 it's around that n number 450 Hertz or so right that is my cycles that's where where my my sh my shorter frequency is in this in this particular room so so I limit it to 500 Hertz and then we go we go from there so that's that to me is a very good um, uh, tip um, if you limit it you will I, I, I you know I'm fairly positive you're going to actually like the sound that you're getting and let your ears decide listen to some two channel listen to some uh, music stereo music and, and and you will see that or you will hear actually uh, uh, a difference in in limit limiting the frequency range versus not limiting the frequency range here's the rt60 decay uh, of my front speakers essentially <clears throat> at 750 milliseconds uh, it is around 453, 450 hertz or so. And then finally, this is this is what made me do this video, right? So, in in uh, you've heard me talk about this, uh, where I I have said, and this is where I was completely, completely wrong, um, is. I would run Odyssey um, and then I would sit in my listening position and, you know, with my SPL meter and make sure that the levels are, are correct. And instead of making the changes on the app, I was making the changes in the receiver. That is a no-no. You, you know, the, the app is where all of the data is. It's sending the data over to the receiver, yes, but the, the receiver is not calculating, uh, you know, all of the filters and things like that uh it's the app that's doing it so you actually have to once you run odyssey you have to measure it with an spl meter right and you can note down on the receiver you can note down what the levels are perfectly fine 
but you have to transfer those 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 levels or you have to go back into the app update all of the levels in the app and then resend it to the receiver that is the right way to do it and that is where i was completely wrong all right so i hope you like this video uh this is just uh, my 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 six tips right uh, to uh, to get the most out of your Odyssey uh, calibration that's built into your processor and your receiver. So if you if you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Um, do do uh, go ahead and share the video. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel uh, and and look and and you know stay tuned for more uh, videos such as this one.